Hello friends. Today we'll be studying about Fermi level. Fermi level is the most important aspect for both intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. It is directly related to how an conduction takes place in a semiconductor. <music> Fermi level. So before starting Fermi level, we must know what actually Fermi level is and what is Fermi energy is. It is most important to distinguish between these two terms. So the definition says, Fermi energy, it is the maximum energy possessed by a free electron at absolute zero temperature. Whereas Fermi level says, it is the highest energy state occupied by a free electron at absolute zero temperature. Well, in both of the cases, you note that we are talking about absolute zero temperature. Absolute zero temperature is nothing but as zero Kelvin or minus 273 degree centigrade. This is the temperature at which all the motion is seized. Now, the important point to note is Fermi level is the highest energy state and Fermi energy is the maximum energy possessed by free electron. So, how would you basically distinguish between these two? Let's take an example of a material. This could be a metal or any probable element or a substance. This is the energy state diagram. The green lines you can see are the various states of energy. Well, what are states of energy? Well, as of now, you just remember states of energy as regions or particularly the hierarchy of energies. And these are the electrons. Now, if you look at the series, you will find at this state, my last electron is present, which makes this state as my Fermi level. Now, this could be clear by the definition now. Fermi level, it is the highest energy state occupied by a free electron. This is the free electron and the highest energy state occupied by this is this. So, basically, you can say your Fermi level is the highest energy state occupied by a free electron. So, what exactly Fermi energy is then? Well, Fermi energy is the maximum energy possessed by a free electron. A very important point to note that this free electron at Fermi energy is not the same as the free electron at Fermi level. Well, in other words, it is. it could be easier to say that the electron at Fermi level, which is this electron, could possess the maximum energy. Is it always true? Well, no. There could be a possibility that this electron possesses maximum energy, but this is not always true. The maximum energy could be possessed by, let's say, suppose this electron. So, the energy possessed by this electron will be called as Fermi energy. So, Fermi level is the maximum state at which the free electron occupies and Fermi energy is the maximum energy of any electron below the Fermi level. Now, let's take a real life example and understand this concept very well. As you can see, there are people here and among these people, I elect this person as the Prime Minister. Now, so what you can say about them? Well, you can say that this person holds the highest designation of any country. But is it necessary that he'll be the richest person in the country? Well, no. Let's say, suppose this person here is the richest man. He is the richest man of the country. Now, this particularly makes clear about Fermi energy and Fermi level. As you can see, Prime Minister is the highest designation or the highest state of any person in the country. So, this actually represents Fermi level. And also, this is the richest man 
which denotes the most powerful person in the country and hence he represents Fermi energy. So this is how Fermi energy and Fermi level are distinguished. It's a very important point. You should make note because this question could be asked as a viva question in your exams. Now, let's extend this study to intrinsic and extrinsic types of semiconductor. Now, for an intrinsic semiconductor, we know that the valence band and the conduction band almost contains equal number of majority and minority carriers, which means that the number of electrons in the valence band will be equal to the number of electrons in the conduction band. For an intrinsic semiconductor, the Fermi level lies exactly at the center. This. So, we'll call this as EF or the Fermi level. Now, what happens in type of n-type semiconductor? We all know that n-type semiconductor is made by taking a pentavalent impurity into an intrinsic semiconductor. So, if this n-type semiconductor had been initially an intrinsic semiconductor, so of course, this would be its Fermi level. Now, since there's an n-type impurity or a pentavalent impurity added, which means that it has extra electrons, which again means that it has more number of electrons. So, the Fermi level shift towards the conduction band. So, this is what the Fermi level is expected to be, but this is what the reality is. The Fermi level shift towards the conduction band. So, well, it is now easy to guess what happens for the p-type semiconductor. We all know that in p-type semiconductor, there is an electron deficient impurity which has been added, which is nothing but as a trivalent impurity. So, if this had been an intrinsic semiconductor, this would be its Fermi level. But since we have added a p-type impurity, so the Fermi level shifts downwards. So, this is the Fermi level for n-type semiconductor and this is the Fermi level for p-type semiconductor. Now, well, as you saw, it is easy to say that in intrinsic semiconductor, the Fermi level lies exactly between the conduction band and valence band. But do we have a proof for it? Well, yes. This is the most important question for your university exams. Fermi level of intrinsic semiconductor. Now, let's recall this is the band energy diagram for intrinsic semiconductor. This is the Fermi level. This becomes my EV, the energy of the valence band. And this becomes the energy of conduction band. Well, the notations are very important. EC stands for energy of the conduction band and EV stands the energy of the valence band. EF, of course, is the Fermi level energy. We know that the number of electrons in the conduction band are given as Ne is equals to Nc into E raised to minus ka EC minus EF upon Kt, whereas the number of holes in the valence band is equal to Nv e to the power minus EF minus EV upon KT. NE and NH represents the number of electrons and number of holes in conduction band and valence band respectively, whereas NC and NV represents the electron densities in conduction band and valence band. So, important to know that there is a difference between small n and capital N. You don't need to worry about the values of capital NC and capital NV because these are just the constants. But for better approximation, we will be saying that NC is equal to NV. You have to make this statement before starting the derivation. For an intrinsic semiconductor, we know that Ne is equals to NH or I can say that my number of electrons is equal to the number of holes. So, if that is true, of course the RHS will be true. So, I can say that my this equation holds true. So, well, if this is the case, I can cancel NC and NV from both of the sides for the better approximations assumption that I have already made and the equation becomes this. Now, as you can say, e to the power something is equal to e to the power something. So, of course, both the things on the power side will be equal, which makes 
माइनस ऑफ ई सी माइनस ई एफ अपॉन के टी इक्वल्स टू माइनस ऑफ ई एफ अपॉन ई वी अपॉन के टी कैंसलिंग माइनस ऑन बोथ द साइड एंड अफकोर्स के टी एज वेल विल बी गेटिंग दिस इक्वेशन ई सी माइनस ई एफ इज इक्वल्स टू ई एफ माइनस ई वी रीअरेंजिंग दैम वुड लीड टू ई सी प्लस ई वी इज इक्वल्स टू ई एफ प्लस ई एफ और नथिंग बट एज ई एफ इज इक्वल्स टू ई सी प्लस ई वी बाई टू दिस इज द इम्पॉर्टेंट इक्वेशन दैट वी हैव डिराइव फॉर विच मीन्स दैट इन इंटेंसिक सेमी कंडक्टर द फर्मी लेवल लाइज एग्जैक्टली बिटवीन द कंडक्शन बैंड एंड द बैलेंस बैंड और मैथमेटिकली सेंग द ई एफ वैल्यू इज नथिंग बट एज द मिनिमम वैल्यू ऑफ ई सी एंड मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ऑफ ई वी डिवाइडेड बाई टू थैंक यू